chronic hemorrhage. She has also published books on wellness and meditation. She lives on the beautiful island of Divar, and that is what you can see in her poems. Her poems are beautiful, especially when she writes about nature. Um, she's into, heal into healing arts and meditation. She conducts workshops. She has a website, and you should check this out. It's lindamakimanne.com. Um, she has an app, too. And um, this is just the right time in the morning to be here sitting with Ermelinda and uh, let her take you to this. Over to you, Ermelinda. Thank you, Bina. So right away, he's praised me a lot. I accept it with gratitude. And let's begin. So let's not look at numbers currently. We are here. And that's what counts. So the first thing I want to dedicate this session to my literature professors in college, because um, I didn't love poetry as a kid. I didn't like the way, I didn't understand it. It seemed too distant. But it was my professors in college, Professor uh, John Coelho and Preeti Shirodkar, who really helped me understand poetry. So I want to mention their names. And there's another professor, Professor Shinoy. He taught us discipline. So the three of these together are my uh, cornerstone in understanding literature and poetry better. Having said that, I want to set an, a very simple intention for the uh, next few minutes or whatever that we are together. This intention is like this. Only those energies that are for our highest good, may only those energies show up today. Whatever is not for our highest good, may that step behind. All are good with this? Thank you. So, Viktor Frankl has said, what is to give light must endure burning. Now, if this statement needs to hold true, it means that we all have a light within us. And the moments of pain would therefore mean the moments of burning. So what are we taught about pain? What are we taught about pain? Any answers? Say. We have to endure it. Or else, what else? If you have access to medication, what would you do? Pop a pill, yeah. So this is our understanding of pain, that pain is not needed. I can, you know, dull the pain, numb the pain, and I don't need to feel the pain. Now, what I'm presenting before you is that you need to feel the pain. You need to understand where the pain is coming from. You need to engage with the pain. So this is where we are going, all right? Um, even Viktor Frankl started this logotherapy. So it was a way of healing pain. Now, what sort of pains do we have? We have physical pain. We have emotional pain. There's mental pain. And there's also spiritual pain, which is not much acknowledged. Um, let's work with this concept that pain is a messenger. OK? So when pain is a messenger, pain is telling you something. So we are going to right away start this very short exercise. I'm going to ask you to work with your own body. So we have four bodies, the physical, the emotional, the mental, and the spiritual. You'll notice if someone comes too close to you, they are not touching you, but they are still too close to you. You get a sense of someone is violating my space, right? So why is that happening? Because there is an extension beyond your skin. Your body moves beyond your skin. So there is this sense of you will allow only someone to come closer to you who's actually in a close relationship with you. Apart from Mumbai locals, of course, where I have traveled. So yes. So let's do this very brief activity and you will be able to, you'll be surprised how easily your body starts responding to the, when you put the right questions to it, okay? So we are going to breathe in and breathe out. Again, you don't need to close your eyes. If you do feel safe, close your eyes, okay? So breathe in. 
Follow your breath and it will release after some time. Breathe in. Fill your lungs to capacity now. Okay? Fill it to capacity and then release. Do that one more time. Breathe in. Breathe out. There's a rhythm your body follows. I want you to only observe the rhythm. The rhythm of your breath. When you work with your internal eyes, there is a degree of awareness to what is going on inside. Inside the body, there may be a flicker of pain. There may be trembling. There may be some emotion that has been pushed aside, wanting to be seen and heard. So just allow all of this, all your attention to focus on that one pain which you've been pushing aside, maybe with pills or with busyness. Stay busy so I don't need to focus on that pain. Maybe you're not ready yet to look at that pain. All of this is good. It's just right. Notice your heart. How does your heart feel in response to how you're responding to the pain? Now just blink a few times and open your eyes. What did you notice? What did each of you notice about what's going on inside of you? Were there emotions which surfaced? Were there images, memories? Did you all notice light, darkness? Yes? Anyone wants to say something specific that they noticed? Or did you feel you didn't want to go there? And that's alright too. Whatever you felt, we'll work with that. So, did you notice that your body knows what you're going through? Are you li living detached from your body, thinking that this pain is in my body, I need to dull the pain, but actually that pain is a messenger. So I'm going to prove it to you through the course of this session. Now, we'll do the next activity. There are three questions. You can write down the questions because you can use these questions later on also. It do doesn't need to be limited to this session. The three questions are, you're addressing the questions to the pain. Pain, what are you telling me? If someone doesn't have paper and pen, I have it here, okay? Pain, what are you telling me? Pain, what's your age? The second question, pain, what's your age? And question three, pain, what emotion are you holding? Are you all willing to feel the pain now? Do you all feel that, yes, I'm willing to go there? Everyone feels that way? Okay. So, put your pen and paper aside. Come, come in. Come ahead, no? It's okay. Come ahead. So, let's now take that deep breath in. Our body knows that you are now aware of what it is going through. When your body knows that it's aware, it automatically calms down. You notice that. Your vagus nerve has got 
activated your parasympathetic nervous system is now taking charge so it's okay whatever busyness you have come from now is the moment this is the present moment just focus on the moment what do you hear what do you see with your internal eyes what is that voice in your head which is telling you you must do this this needs to be done this should be done can you ask it shh keep quiet what is that one pain that you want to focus on it could be physical it could be emotional as i said it could also be a mental a worry thought and it could be a spiritual angle something that you're seeking but you're not able to reach whatever surfaces for you now we go with that focus on all your attention on the pain and maybe this pain shows up in a physical manner it may show up in your skin when your skin is hurt and your skin shows up in a rash it could show up as a chronic issue it could show up as a migraine as an upset stomach backache shoulder pain heel pain knee pain joint pain for each of you it is a different pain focus on that pain all your attention is there on the pain the pain may increase stay with it the pain may show up in color notice that now ask the question to the pain internally pain what are you telling me and wait some of you may notice someone crying there there could be yelling there could be silence next question you can ask that pain again maintain that laser focus if your thoughts have drifted it's okay bring them back focus on the pain pain what's your age how old are you pain whatever number surfaces for you first is usually correct the third question again draw your attention back pain what emotion are you holding and it's okay to to feel fidgety it's okay to want to cough that's your body's way of recognizing there's something it needs to let out I want you to take up your writing gear, your pen, your pencil in your non-dominant hand. Pick it up, change your hand, take to paper, write down words which surfaced. You can draw a picture. You can write statements, full sentences. what you noticed happening internally is what you are going to use your non dominant hand and express we ask three questions you could use those as stepping stones pain what are you telling me what answer did you receive to that
when you ask the question about emotions what surfaced sometimes we don't want to go there and how many of you feel we don't want to go there i don't want to examine this okay so start with that that's a good place to begin put on paper i don't want to go there but always start with your non dominant hand so i'm left handed when i do this activity i use my right hand those words will not come out easy it will be difficult to hold your pen struggle through it the answers are in the struggle what you write may not seem clean it may just come out as an outpouring or it may not you may be even struggling to form the words on the paper that struggle is important for your soul so work through it if silence surfaced for you nothing blackness start there put the word blackness down put the word silence down then feel into the mood of that silence the mood of the blackness is it an angry silence is it a painful silence feel into that you're going to just you know you're going to feel but you're not feeling with your fingers you're feeling with your internal there's an internal uh, device within all of us to be able to feel what's going on you're holding that pulse of your being feel into that i'll try to stay silent for 2 minutes so you can work with your inner voice and if you get distracted go back to your heart heart show me tell me and you'll be back on track So if you're writing, you can wind up. Just stop. Draw your attention back to this 
current moment what shifted for you i need answers here from before we began this session and now we are about 15 minutes past what knowledge have you understood what what has been shifting for you after the, this two very brief activities did you notice something shift did you notice that you are in a different uh, zone of awareness with regard to your pain with regard to your body and sometimes what we are doing is we want to present our persona to the world and the world can even be your immediate family so you don't have the time for pain and so you're not pushing pain just it's not like it's a recent thing it becomes a uh, cyclical and uh, habitual uh, attempt on our part we are constantly pushing away pain so imagine years and years of pain which is just pushed away and locked away and sometimes that pain may not even be yours so there could be pain that your ethnic community suffers there could be pain that your family has so it could be an ancestral thing it's not always only your pain you notice how you know um, like my mother used to have uh, sinus issues and so between my sister and me i was the one who got these sinus issues and then we feel oh these are um, genetic issues they are not they are things that we learn from our parents that they are coping mechanisms we absorb or rather they are lack of coping mechanisms we absorb and so we tend to also compress pain in the same manner yeah so now we are going to do the third activity but uh, is there anything anyone wants to ask me at this point in time or should we leave questions for the end for the end all right so ready for the third activity okay good you're going to ask the pain okay so put down your pens again this activity makes you want to go inside put down your pens close your eyes whatever is around you is all right in this moment your focus is internal so go inside stay with the pain that location of pain which has shown up for you in your body that specific area of pain i want you to breathe in and imagine that you have gone inside your body and you're standing in front of the pain and if someone doesn't have a specific area of pain right now go and stand in front of your heart ask that pain are you mine pain do you belong to me you may be surprised at the answer second question pain how many people are there in my body how many people are there in my body right now so whose pain are you holding it could be a multiple multiple levels and multiple people's pain that you're holding you got your two answers open your eyes put that down use your non dominant hand using your non dominant hand gives a very powerful message to your subconscious so those of you who write write poetry and you're stuck writer's block 
use your non-dominant hand. That is a direct connect to your subconscious. What did you observe about the pain? Is all of the pain yours? Yeah, good. How many people, did anyone get one as an answer? How many people in my body? How many got more than one as an answer? Okay. So that surprised you, right? I had one person uh, in one of the workshops I did, she said 1,000 something. And then when I spoke to her two weeks later, she said it's moved down to 800. So, you know, when you work through this, you're able to release it. And we'll release it. Don't worry. We'll release it today. You've put down some words, some phrases. Do you feel you can um, give it a kind of a flow or move it into a poetic form? Just look at what you've put on the paper. Circle four words there. Those words will pop out for you. Only four words. Since you've all worked with poetry before, I'm sure, so you know how a poem goes, how, a, how it's structured. Use those four words and write something that is yours. It could be four lines, two lines, but that's coming from deep, deep within you. Use your non-dominant hand, yes. I love your smile. <laughs> Something good has come out, I think, in the writing. So I'm going to explain this concept of mirror neurons because I'm sure some of you are really surprised that how can more than one people be in my body? When you ask the question, uh, how many people are in my body? The number of people whose pain you're holding. Some of you must have been surprised that the number which surfaced was not one. It was like either blurry or it was more than one. So this is because of this concept of mirror neurons. Uh, what do mirror neurons do? Because humans as a community, as a species, works in a community setting. So. Suppose I'm standing here, you don't even know me, but uh, <laughs> I, I'm talking to you all and in the course of that, I fall off the stage and I hurt myself. Of course, there'll be some of you who may laugh, but some of you may actually feel that 
that thing that we do okay when you see someone else in pain what are you doing is you're mirroring their pain now think of it this way suppose i'm reading a newspaper article about an event which could be horrifying whatever i'm reading it what am i doing at the same time what are my neurons doing is they are mirroring whatever has happened to that person or persons or community and you are reading it it has not happened to you but you are pulling in the pain of people you don't even know so because you read and you identify your body's mirror neurons have just mirrored the pain i mean we we read about horrific items in the news and we do feel disgust we feel helplessness we feel rage at the same time we feel that you know it's like you you're impotent you can't do anything so this is all that happens within you just by reading an article or watching something on the news this is so much of pain that you've pulled into you and then maybe you'll start a headache later in the day and you'll not even realize oh this headache has come actually from there because you were not aware of the the linearity or the flow so here is what you need to do when you're mirror, mirroring become aware the more of awareness you live your life with the more you're able to catch who's paid your pulling in you may be passing the road passing by and there's people who are angry on the road and they're fighting and then you walk past and you realize you're angry and you don't even know why because you just pulled it into you so we are all very empathetic beings as such and sometimes we are not aware of where we should be putting a boundary and where we should be pulling in the pain someone just you know stubbing their toe painfully you may say and even that simple act may be that you pulled in someone's pain so become aware and at the end of every day talk to your body ask it baba if you pulled in someone's pain now release it let it go i don't need this for my life it's okay to let it go we need to let it go there is there are other pains you have to deal with where you have to go in and do a lot of excavating the work that that could be your own pain the pain of our past generations we need to do that work but these are the small pains you don't need to pick you can release those so here are the words of the release i'm going to give it to you so you can also work with yourselves like that you can write down the words so first i will use the words i'll give you the words later for the last time today we will focus back on the pain how many of you were actually working with physical pain in the past few minutes anyone was work physical pain okay what have you noticed over the past few um, like half an hour maybe what has shifted about that physical pain okay you're noticing some changes you're noticing patterns okay very good usually if you put a number to the pain okay always put a number to the pain it's very interesting so if your headache is like on an 8 and then you do some of this soul searching work 10 minutes later put a number again on a scale of 0 to 10 it may move to 5 it may move to 3 okay so now i want you to focus on those um people and emotions that your pain is holding the pain within you i'm going to say the words and you're going to mirror the words to the pain as if you you know um directing a light with laser focus toward the pain i call forward all of this emotion and all these people 
and I ask them to go. I call forward all of this emotion and all these people and I ask them to go. I call forward all of this emotion and all of this pain and I ask them to go. And maybe you notice a vortex being formed, whirling within you. All you need to do is direct that vortex outside of you. Imagine a huge sun in front of you. Bright, golden yellow light. Send the vortex to the sun. And you could bow before the sun or just say a simple thank you, brother sun, grandfather sun, however you want to address the sun for just taking your pain into it. And now you clear it all with these simple three words, clear, clear, clear. Now check in with your heart. So placing one hand on your heart, whenever you touch the part of your body, that part of the body recognizes the touch. It responds. So place your hand on your heart and you're going to ask it. Have I understood the message that this pain was holding? Is it complete? Is the process complete? You'll get an answer. And that's the answer that will tell you if there's more work to be done or if today's process is complete. You can gradually just blink a few times. And open your eyes. So this is what I had. I hope you all enjoyed it. Bina, I finished on time. Any questions? One moment. You want the mic? Are the words of release, yeah. Call forward, I call forward. All of this emotion, and all these people, and I ask them to go. Now this is energy work, basically. So. When you're working with energy, it's always good to clean your own energy. Like doing a light bath, you know, allowing the sun, imagining the sun is cleaning you. Because you work with light and darkness. I'm a shadow work coach. So we go, we shine the light on what's dark. What happens is when you work with this, you can also get tainted. But you will always go back to light and clean yourself. Don't attempt this with others. Only do it for yourself. Because you don't have the tools, you don't have the, um, the range, the wherewithal to work with others. You need to train yourself for that. But you can do it for yourself. Any other questions? Yeah. So you'll um, use the same uh, tool for emotional pain as well. You'll use it the same way. So if you notice that, you know, there was uh, anger, 
hidden below the pain. Now, for me, when I was working with a skin issue, which was chronic, every time I tapped into the pain, I could hear someone crying, a child crying. I could feel a lot of anger. So as I uh, felt into the pain, what I sensed was that all my angry moments, which I had suppressed, were sitting in my skin. Many people have this, you know, the skin is erupting and then you need to apply a cream and skin issues, sometimes they come, they go on their own, but sometimes they stay on for a longer period. And the doctors may not really understand, but it's a lot of suppression which is going on, a lot of anger which the person is not able to express. Why poetry helps? Why did I term this session poetry for healing? It could be art or literature, anything, but poetry specifically because uh, for me, poetry has been that outlet that whatever I was suppressing over the years and it was leading to pain or painful situations, I was able to express. So pain, when it is uh, suppressed, it will lead to more pain. Therefore, you need to, the opposite of suppress, you need to express. The same for emotion, therefore, your question. When I'm not allowing myself to feel a particular emotion in its entirety, the emotion stays within me. It gets blocked. It could be anger, like if my boss scolds me and I'm not able to, you know, say the right things back to them, I hold it all inside. So whatever you're holding in will create a kind of compression, suppression. The opposite of it, therefore, is expression. So are we good to go? Thank you. There are my cards here. If anyone wants to pick a card, so you want to contact me later, you can do that. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.